Hey everyone, welcome to the very first episode in this new series called How To Do Recon. Um, this is going to start being a bit of an introduction to what Recon is and why we do it and what we're actually looking for. This entire series is going to show you how to go from kind of not knowing anything about a target to how to actually do Recon and finally <laughs> what to do with all the data. And we say no to running tools without knowing exactly what you want. We say no to um, just seeing loads of text and not being able to do anything about it. We want actionable stuff we can actually do something about. We have some news, people. Integrity is sponsoring this video. Um, and actually, they're sponsoring a few videos on my channels, channel now. Um, and if you're unaware of them, they're a bug bounty platform, like HackerOne, like Bug Crowd, but they tend to focus on European customers, uh, especially sort of mainland European. Um, they're definitely a smaller platform, and they have different programs that you don't necessarily see on other platforms, especially kind of like local, essentially, uh, to European businesses. Um, but they're really active on social media, like they really reply to hackers, they're always interacting with the community, always trying to resolve issues. Um, they have a really wide range of targets actually, um, like a lot of different kind of choices to get started on. Um, and you don't necessarily find the same types of targets on their platform like you would on another platform. And that tends to be because their customer focus is really on uh, Europe. But there's not many hackers, you know, comparatively anyway, hacking those um those programs on that they post so not only does they kind of have all the platforms they also run these xss challenges which really help you test your skill and and they have prizes now i'm not gonna lie to you they're hard <laughs> i had to go i'm not very good at xss you know i don't know all the bypass integrity bloody they got me couldn't do it but they do have prizes like but but's professional and you don't necessarily need to be like super into bug bounty hunting to be a really good at XSS. And they do tend to give a lot of clues and it tends to be kind of news related to XSS, like new techniques and stuff like that. But why am I so happy to work with them? They are so community focused and I love giving back to the community. I think it's so important in this community to give back to it and to really um, uh, promote content and promote new um, like communities, but also to really just let the community go onwards. And they're giving back to the community. They're really investing in not just me, but other creators on YouTube, but also in sponsoring newsletters, um, other, other videos, other creators. Um, and one thing that's really important to me is they're not actually dictating my content that I'm making. They're not really pushing me to make focused content. Um, but I want you guys to know that I don't really take this lightly. Um, I don't want advertisers on my channel and that I don't like actually support. Um, and I really do like Integrity. They do amazing things for the bug bounty community. If you're not already a member, you can sign up with my link, which is go.integrity.com forward slash Katie. That's I's instead of E's. Um, and it's on screen now and you can go and read it. There'll be a link in the description that you can click. Um, and I just want to say that a sponsorship like this means a lot to me because I can really invest more into the channel. One of the first things I want to invest in is better audio equipment. I know it's been a constant problem um, and perhaps getting the ability to stream a bit more easily as well. So I really hope you all give them some love. I'm promoting them because I think they provide something great and I really hope you'll love them too. So if you want to sign up, the link is on screen, go.integrity.com forward slash Katie. Let's get started with how to do recon. Welcome to how to do recon. This is a new series separate from finding your first bug, separate from finding your next bug, separate from like everything else. Um, I'm learning recon. I don't know anything about recon. Uh, I know the vaguest amount but I'm still learning it. But I thought I'd take you along with me because as I'm learning things, and my YouTube channel really started this way where I, in my head, I'm still a kind of a beginner. I'm definitely intermediate when it comes to bug bounty hunting. And when I started, I was at times still a beginner. Um, and I realized I understood the beginner mindset. Like I understood what other people would struggle with. So I wanted to take people along with me on my journey of becoming a hacker. 
Um, and this is my journey of becoming a recon hacker. I'm not an expert on this. So please do, if you have corrections, if you have comments, leave them. Um, if there are major corrections that I need to make to a video, I will issue an errata. Brand new video saying, here's what I fucked up, here's what I got wrong. Because um, I'm, I'm learning, but I thought as I'm learning, I really want to take you guys with me and so we can all learn together. Uh, and I love tips and tricks, if you've got any. So, what is recon? <laughs> what, is, what is recon even? Um, a lot of people talk about recon, but what on earth is it? Like, you should do recon. What is recon? Um, so let's start with what recon really isn't. Recon isn't a shortcut to find bugs. Doing recon will not find you a bug. <laughs> it might, it's probably not. It's not a shortcut. It's not like, you know, 10 simple tricks to help you find a bug and get paid like 10k. Um, and it really, like, you can always find stuff in plain sight if you, when you're hacking. Like, you will just come across stuff. You're like, that should be public. But recon may be kind of an activity that helps find those. But it's certainly not this, like, super easy trick to be able to find them. Um, and I really want to get that across, like, in my entire series. That just doing recon won't find you a bug. You have to eventually start hacking and finish the recon stage. Um, recon isn't running lazy recon and calling it a day. A lot of people have heard of this. This is lazy recon. It's made by Nahamsek. And he included like a bunch of these uh, different features from other creators, other developers um, that have like subdomain gathering and screenshots and you can run it on a server and just be done with it. You can't just run this <laughs> and that's your recon done. Run the command, haven't used any of the data from it, gonna go and uh, take a nap. You can't do that, that's not what recon is. Um, it's very useful and we're gonna be talking all about how to use tools in this and how to really um, take advantage of tools. But you can't just run a tool, you have to run a tool and then use the output of it. Uh, and it isn't running AMAS either and calling it a day. This is, oh my god, this is amazing. Uh, this is by OWASP um, and it does network mapping of attack surfaces and external asset discovery. So basically a bunch of different tools that can grab a bunch of different data. You know whether or not that's certificates to find subdomains, whether that's archives to look and see how a web page has changed. It has everything. You also can't just run this and call it a day. <laughs> you have to like actually do some hacking and these are really good tools, really useful tools. Um, but, but you've also got to eventually actually, <laughs> actually start hacking. Um, so recon isn't a thing only really clever people do. This isn't like, oh, I'm big brain because I can do recon and you're smooth brain because you can't. This is really, um, something we all kind of do as we hack, you know, reconnaissance is just finding out more information about a target, right? It's not just this activity, this really clear bounded activity that's running a tool. It's this constant process of learning about your target. Um, and you're doing it already, I promise you. <laughs> um, but you can really up your game without putting in like, and going super crazy on it. And related, you know, recon isn't just one method. There's many different ways to get to do recon. It's not just this whole, okay, if you're doing this, this is recon and this isn't recon. Recon is running tools. It's using, um, you know, directory brute forcing. Um, it's clicking on links, right? Recon is so many different things. It's not just one, one defined method. Um, so from all of that, what is recon? Recon is something we do to expand our attack surface. And really, when we look at hacking, our um, target is an, is an iceberg, right? We only see this one half here. This is our web app, our mobile app. That's the pretty things on the screen that we can click on and click OK. And there are buttons and text boxes and all that kind of stuff. But there is a whole host of stuff down here that we never see. You know, we have APIs sometimes that never get called in the main web app. GitHub where the code is posted. 
we have the frameworks that power a, an app. You know, most modern web apps, for example, aren't just built with HTML and CSS. They're built, you know, with uh, frameworks like in PHP, you have Laravel or Zend. Um, in Python, you have Django, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you're not actually, you know, even just this part of the web app, underneath there is just a bunch of these different components that all talk to each other which the developer doesn't even look at then we have you know directories that exist being able to find out where files are hosted super useful um, but not just that you know what else has been uploaded to a server what can you see we then have subdomains so our main web app might be www dot but there might be subdomains in there and there might be so much and then you have the underlying infrastructure, you know, you have the servers that power it. You have the containers, right? If it's a containerized web app, you've got a hell of a lot underneath this iceberg here. This, literally, the bit you can see. You're here, you're this little boat, lovely little boat, you're looking at that, but you need to be hacking down here. Or you need to at least know what's down here so you can hack it. So Recon really... It lets us peek beneath the waves. We often are just stuck looking in a web app from the outside. Recon gives us that little peek that maybe an internal penetration tester might have, for example. So, what's the point? What's the point of Recon? What? 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 Uh, well, first, we want to learn about our target. Um, we want to learn what our target does and how it does it and why developers might have done things in a certain way. We want to see exactly what we can hack. You know, if we've got an API there, we want to find out exactly every single endpoint that's on the API, every single URL we can hit. Um, we want to find if there's underlying infrastructure, especially if we're trying to do more complex bugs. We might like look at SSRF, server-side request forgery, where we almost use a web app as a gateway into an internal network. There's a video coming out on that, by the way. A lot of people have asked. There's a video. Don't worry. Um... That is kind of, we need to see if we want to execute some bugs, what's on the other side. Uh, we kind of want to find out if things have been forgotten about. Web apps kind of, they don't just, as much as developers would love this, they're not just planned at a meeting, like, and people have gone, hmm, yes, this is our web app, it will do this, and then it will do this, and then it will do this, and it will be perfect, and we'll launch it, and everyone will love it. A web app kind of grows like an amorphous blob with everybody adding their own little bits to it and over time it just creates this almost monstrous like um, thing and we're looking for you know this commit here that a developer added in like 2015 that has the company's entire financial data on it that's what we mean when we think things have been forgotten we want to find additional endpoints, additional URLs, in case you want to escalate a bug. You know, if we can turn an IDOR into account takeover, that's amazing. Knowing there's an IDOR somewhere, if we can show that, we can really escalate our um, impact and get a higher bounty. People think of an IDOR as kind of beginner-friendly bug. Um, it's something that doesn't require a lot of technical knowledge. Um, that gets paid quite low maybe but actually if you can hit the right endpoints if you understand the web app you can be hitting it where it hurts you can really be finding some amazing bugs that are just there because um, we can escalate an, a simpler bug further and we've got to find new features when a web app launches you know new features are not going to automatically be secure they might have more people looking at them but actually if we can hit the new features before anybody else realizes they're there we can really start to be like okay we'll hack this before anyone else even knows about it and your thing is to find old features i think we all get excited if we see a web page looks like from the geocities day you're thinking oh all the old bugs come back you know sql injections a bit out of favor now but actually if you find a really old web app 10 10 years old that's just been once again forgotten about in the bowels of the beast here this might be an SQL injection, uh, and even better, it might be an SQL injection for the main web app, <laughs> and I promise you that happens. So these are our goals of Recon. Our, you'll notice here that our goal isn't find a bug. Our goal is to learn more, to understand our target, to really 
work out what it's doing under the hood and find out what we can hack and start to prioritize what we can hack. You know, we want to look at something and go, I need to hack that because that's a new feature and in a week there'll be hundreds of people who are looking at it. Or you want to be able to look and say, I know where the old features are, I know where the new features are. So what to expect from Recon and why it won't immediately fix your problems with hacking. If you're a beginner, I know Recon looks amazing. It looks like the thing to do. But I really want to be clear here, and especially as we go through kind of my series on Recon, what we're going to be looking at. Recon alone won't find you bugs. Sometimes you get lucky. Yeah, you get lucky in bug bounty all the time. You just stumble upon something. Oh, look at that information disclosure that I've just stumbled upon after five minutes of looking. It's very commonly information disclosure because um, people upload files and forget they're there or an API endpoint just will return back tons of information. Sometimes you get lucky but you can stumble upon bugs when you're not doing recon activities and you can't just look at recon as this like really quick way of finding bugs. Um, you've got to look at recon as this activity that you do to understand your target because that change of mindset will make recon feel less like a pain in the ass. Um, everyone and their mum is doing recon. Recon is really hot at the moment. Any low hanging bugs uh, will be caught by the person who ran AMAS or lazy recon the day before you did. We're not interested in low hanging fruits. We want to find new things to hack, not info left in plain sight. When we do recon, we're not looking for the immediate low-hanging fruits. We're looking for the low-hanging fruits that's one step further along. It's the, I found an API endpoint which is vulnerable to an IDOR because I checked. I wasn't just running lazy recon and waiting. I was actually hacking at the same time. Um, and I think with everyone doing recon at the moment, a lot of people are really excited about it, really want to give it a go. I certainly see it as a really cool way to start upping my hacking game um, because I really feel like I kind of fall into a bit of a rut sometimes um, and I think that's a great way to want to do recon but you're not just going to find bugs. Um, so the other thing I want to mention is working smarter. Now when you use recon for its intended purpose you are like really working smart. Instead of hacking the main app or hoping to bump into a bug with recon we're going to look for assets which haven't had a lot of attention put on them. That's the difference, right? The difference between hacking the main app and finding a bug, which feels amazing, and understanding what we're hacking, look what we're looking for, what we want to get out of it. We're looking for assets which haven't had a lot of attention put on us. That's how we find bugs that nobody else has found. So what should you expect from Recon? And the only thing you should expect from Recon? More information. That's it. That is all more Recon is going to let you do. When you don't need any more information to get hacking, that's when Recon ends. You then start hacking. Or you should be hacking at the same time as you do Recon. So with that in mind, you probably already do some Recon. Uh, if you read a target's website to find out what it does, that's Recon. Check out the blog section of a target to find more information on features. Recon. Pressing buttons randomly and seeing what they do. That's Recon. Looking around for something that looks like it would fit right in at GeoCities, Recon. If you run Lazy Recon AMAS and get confused at the output, you're doing Recon. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> um, and you're getting confused and it's not helping you. You're just wasting VPS power. Um, but it's still Recon and you're still learning about your target. That's the point. We want more information. We want internal penetration testers have this huge advantage that bug bounty hunters don't have and that's that they understand the underlying infrastructure they understand and they can just go ask somebody if they want to know oh what framework powers this web app they'll just go ask the developers or the team lead what powers it and then they'll look for cves we have to do it the hard way so i want to talk about how to do recon in a more structured way because um, my version of recon is pressing buttons randomly and see what they do. I will click every single button on a mobile app, on a web app, and just see what it hits, right? What kind of business logic I can fit into it. By the way, if you want to know more about my methodology and how I approach it, like a target and kind of my steps to creating a bug, um, that's a video coming next week. So let's talk about how to do recon in a more structured way. 
Um, and I'm going to prevent, present this kind of methodology to recon, which is the idea of a goal, a method, and kind of a destination. Um, so instead of randomly doing recon, we're going to break it up. We're going to break it up into our goal, what we want to learn, our method, how we're going to learn it, and our destination, you know, what something should output. We shouldn't be blindly running automated tools, just hoping to stumble upon a bug and getting confused. Um, because we're not going to learn anything, because we can't action that intelligence, right? We might have, like, a terabyte of data on every single subdomain that Verizon Media owns. But what's that actually telling us about Verizon Media? We have to look at the assets, understand what they are. If we're looking for, say, subdomain enumeration, our goal is going to be different. What we want to learn is different. Let's talk about goals to start with. So some recon goals might be to find out what version of software something uses, to find CVEs re relate to it that we can write a quick exploit for, um, to find additional API endpoints to test, um, to investigate subdomains to find something that might have been forgotten about, to act find out if anything was accidentally committed to GitHub, and that depend on your target and what you need to learn about it. If you're dealing with a target with a really, really large scope, what you might want to do is do subdomain enumeration to find out the specific web apps that you have kind of access to and look at the screenshots and see, okay, what does that web app do? Not finding a bug or stumbling upon like a random like uh, login page, right, that looks old, um, but to go, oh, so I have access to fantasy football and I have access to email and I have access to news to really find out what you can do with that, to find out what you know what each kind of app does, essentially. Um, and if we look at something like GitHub, um, uh, Google Dorking, which will be one of the uh, videos in this series, we're not trying to find a bug, necessarily. We want to find out if anything was accidentally committed to GitHub in order to exploit it. You know, just finding a a file which has a username and password in isn't enough necessarily to get a bug because that those credentials could have been removed years ago finding an active one that we can actually look and hack on that's what we're interested in so these are really going to depend on your target what you're hacking and what you need to know and kind of where you are at in your bug bounty career I'd say for beginners, kind of the main recon activity we want to do is find additional API endpoints. If we see an API, we want to make sure that we know the entire API, the entire surface. Um, and I think finding API endpoints is a really good place to start. So let's talk methods. So we've talked about our goals. Let's talk about how we're going to do it. Methods are really going to depend on your goal. So we go back to our goals. Um, if we want to look at subdomains, we do subdomain enumeration. We want to find out what software version something uses. We might use directory brute forcing to see if we can find uh, a heartbeat, for example, which is a type of uh, endpoint often left on web apps that gives some informa diagnostic information. Um, so what kind of methods do we have? Well, AMASS, A-M-A-S-S, -S, has a ton of tools for almost every occasion. Um, but sometimes you don't even need automation to do recon you can read blogs to find new features you can read documentation sometimes developers will just tell you every api endpoint you just have to read it you can read a web page to find out what a product does and you know sometimes you do need to use more complex tools you might need to use um, for apis for example we might be looking at word lists we might be looking at common api endpoints you might be looking at um creating custom word lists, all that kind of stuff. But actually, sometimes just reading the docs can give you the same information. So I also want to, in this series in general, is really stress that when everything looks like a nail uh, and all you have is automation, you're going to build like a jackhammer. But sometimes you're dealing with screws <laughs> and you need a screwdriver. Sometimes you need a manual approach. And recon and automation is so tempting. It's like, oh my God, think about it. I could be so productive. I could watch YouTube and have it run in the background instead of doing any work. But really, we don't need automation. Um, and we'll go through these methods and I'll go through a few of them for kind of common goals. We're really going to be focusing on goals, what kind of tools we have to achieve those goals. And finally, what we kind of end up with, right? So our destination. Um, 
You should know what your destination is because you carefully selected your goal and the method and what you'll know what it outputs. So in this case, we have a subdomain finder tool and we can see that it's coming back with uh, different API endpoints or different M uh, domain, subdomain, sorry. So you'll still need to look at that and know what the useful bits are for you because, you know, I'm going to say here that info.hacker1 or email.hacker1 is not as important as, uh, a, a, as staging. That's an interesting domain. So what we really want to do in our kind of destination part is looking at, you know, photo content, meh, probably not all that useful, staging, super useful. Um, we might be looking at, you know, API, very interesting. And um, we might be going, well, we know Hacker1, the subdomain, ex the actual domain exists. Uh, we might be interested, okay, what's Go? Is that like some kind of marketing thing or what? Again, user content we can safely ignore and you can kind of see what we're doing here in our destination is taking all of our data and working out what we actually want to know from it so if our goal is to figure out you know what the entire attack surface of hacker one looks like we in this stage look and go okay this is one i'm interested in this is one that i don't think is interesting so whether or not that's putting it into tools or something that you can deal with, um, if you're Tom Nom Nom, you just grep everything because you apparently speak grep <laughs> as a second language. Um, you know, it's not the only way to do it. You can sit there and take manual notes. You can have a word list for things you're interested in. If you're hacking APIs and you're doing subdomain enumeration, you might want to search for the word API when you do it. You also might want to search for stuff like staging. You might want to search for all kinds of different things, right? Um, so sometimes grep and text files, great. Sometimes you need something more visual. Sometimes you'll be sitting there taking manual notes. You know what? Hacking is hard and that's sometimes something we have to deal with. Blindingly running tools won't help you find bugs. It's just going to confuse you. You won't really know what to do. And you won't tell you anything new because you don't understand what it told you because you just ran it because somebody told you to do recon. And this is really the point of this series. We're going to go and save you from the automated tools. We're going to explain what goals you might want to have and why you might want those goals. We're going to talk about what tools to use and look at kind of comparison between tools as well, whether or not you should use lazy recon or... Uh, AMAS or perhaps something written by somebody else or some of Tom Nom Nom's tools because he probably has a tool for it and then really we're going to talk about what they output and how to use that to actually find bugs and I think that's where recon often kind of falls flat because you need to go from getting like information to getting a bug and that's not always as simple as you know step one recon Step two, question mark, question mark, question mark. Step three, bug. You know, it's not that simple, right? There's not this really easy way of doing it. There's this bit here, which is hacking. Um, so let's talk about what we're going to cover in this series. Uh, and I'm really going to give you an introduction to the series, if you want to call it a syllabus. <laughs> uh, it's going to be really similar to my other videos, really. Um, doing a kind of lecture and then doing a demo. Um, we're going to cover specific techniques, so API enumeration, Google dorking, uh, manual recon techniques, subdomain enumeration. In those we're going to be talking about common tools, how to interpret them, and we're really going to go back to this idea of goals and um, methods and destinations and really showing how you use recon tools to get there. To get your debt to get your goal to work out the best method and to get to your destination and finally the kind of the big video at the end and really a bit in between as well is going to be how to use recon data to actually find bugs you know you can have terabytes of recon data and still have zero bugs because you're just you just got too much data quite a lot of i used to be a data scientist i still am a lot of the data that you deal with is noise. You know, if we go back 
I'm really sorry, I know this is distracting. If we go back here, and we see every one of these that starts with profile photos user content, which is just gonna be people's avatars, right? We know that all of them are probably not gonna be useful. On the off chance somebody posted a photo of their driving license, I don't know. So that's just noise as far as we're concerned. You know, we're interested in staging, for example, but we can quickly go, well, that's useless. That's useless. Uh, cover photos, probably also useless. Um, we know that one's useless. Web CEO content for businesses, probably not particularly useful. Uh, and you can see that from this, we're really dealing with a lot fewer domains. We might look at this one. This one has email in it. That's probably useless. Also has email, probably useless. That one has email. Um, support and docs, probably useful. Um, Meta forwarding, probably email, we might be able to just cross that off. Name servers, pff, nothing on there. So from this one command, actually useful information, we might be looking at, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine domains out of all of them. Only nine ones that actually give us some information about them. The rest is just noise. Uh, and that's really what Part of what we're going to cover is how to cut out noise from the data, how to really interpret the data, and what to do with it. You, know, you have so much data, what do we do with all of this data? So thank you very much for watching this kind of introductory video to the How To Do Recon series. I hope you'll join me in this kind of journey as I learn recon along with you. Um, thank you very much to Integrity for sponsoring this video. Please really do check it out. My link is go.integrity.com forward slash Katie or forward slash Insider PhD. The link will be in the description. Please just go check it out. They've been so good to me. I really want to make sure that they get some use out of uh, me being sponsored by them. So the next video on this channel will be all about my bug bounty methodology, my testing methodology. Uh, it's going to be a dive into the insane. <laughs> Um, and a little bit kind of chaotic, but I hope you'll join me and it will answer some questions that you all have. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you all next week. Bye.